German farmers have had enough. It's Monday, the 15th of January, 2024, and thousands of tractors and tens of thousands of Germans are descending on Berlin, capping off a week of protests in which farmers blocked roads and brought life to a standstill across the country. Hauliers and striking railway workers have been standing up this past week too, against Olaf Scholz's increasingly unpopular government. The spark for the farmers' demonstration were government plans to abolish tax breaks on agricultural diesel and bring in new taxes on farm vehicles. But it's also so much deeper than that. Farmers are furious with green ideology, with being made to pay the price for the government's lofty climate goals. And they're furious with being demonised as extremists simply for standing up for their livelihoods. Spites went to Berlin to meet the people behind Europe's latest populist revolt. I'm here to protest for a politics that's based not on ideology, but on facts. If you could just tell us who you are and why you're here today. I'm Katrin and we have a full-time farm. We're here because so many of our subsidies have been cut in recent years, because more and more is being taken away from farmers. We've had enough. I know that the farmers have been particularly upset by the green ideology, the green regulations which have been imposed. Is that a big part of the reason why people are out here? Greens are the worst thing that could happen to farming. People always think greens will do good for the environment and for nature, but it's exactly the opposite. In Germany, we have to set aside a certain portion of our land, but people still need food. It still has to be produced, and so it's produced in Brazil instead, where the rainforest is then cut down. It just doesn't get made here, where we have higher standards in production and processing and so on. Some have tried to dismiss these protests as being extremist or being hijacked by extremists. What would you say to that? There have been attempts by extremists to infiltrate the protests, but the Bavarian Farmers Association and the German Farmers Association, who are behind the protests, have put a stop to this very quickly. We've resisted infiltration attempts so well because there's a lot of cohesion between farmers in Germany. We've been demonstrating for a week and it's always been peaceful. My name is Dennis and uh, I'm a truck driver. I'm here uh, to protest against this government. The uh, road tax, the prices will go up and uh, that's, that's one of the things where we protest against. But I'm looking forward to see a lot of more things changing here. Things are wrong here in this country for years. I spoke there about some of the taxes and the yeah. costs being imposed. Um, yeah. Is a lot of this to do with environmental ideology, green ideology? Yeah, that's the problem. There is no, uh, no possibility to, to uh, discuss about that. People in the media have tried to say that these protests are extreme or far right. What would you say to that? It's totally bullshit, would I say, but uh, I'm, I'm used to it. So I'm, uh, I'm coming from the corona protest as well, so and I'm used to it, and now I don't care about anybody told me I'm far right or whatever. It's just a framing from, 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 from the government. My name is Hagen. My name's Hagen, and I've traveled all the way from Dresden today to support the farmers and to bring some goodwill from the health service, who've already been out protesting on the streets. Green ideology is not inherently wrong, but we've lost our sense of proportion. Everything's now regulated according to green ideology, whether it makes any sense or not. Ob das Sinn macht oder nicht. Some people in the media, in politics, have accused the protesters of being extreme or far right. What would you say to that accusation? As soon as the farmers became active, they were framed as far right and placed in the right wing corner. They don't belong there, and if we're not careful, soon we'll all be called right wing. Here it says laws and rules without reason. This is what we're currently dealing with in Germany. We're inundated with laws and rules. There are new ones every week, and all without any understanding of their impact. It's senseless. On the bottom, the sign says, first the farmer dies, and then the country dies. The next day, we met Sabina betplisch bahl Spike's Germany correspondent, to get some background on the protests. So Sabina, we've been here talking to some of the farmers, some of the truck drivers. What was the spark for this particular string of demonstrations? 
Well, the immediate spark was the uh, cut of um, ta tax subsidies, uh, which was sort of sprung on the farmers last year as a result of the budget crisis Germany has. And it was seen as a, as a huge amount of money and also an unfair amount. There is a longer tail to these protests, I understand. It goes back to 2019. Is that fair to say when we started to see farmers and other people taking action this way? The first time I saw a similar protest was in 2019 when farmers blocked the streets. That was about the ever increasing nitrate laws, uh, regulations, the EU regulations. Farmers came into the city, were protesting. There is a difference to today though, which is, first of all, this protest is bigger. Mm. And secondly, this protest has been um, greeted with much more enthusiasm by the bro broader population. So in 2019, people were thinking farmers were just complaining. You know, they get lots of subsidies. This time, 65% of the Berliners supported the farmers and I saw people waving to them. And, I, and that's also what I got from private conversations. People saying, well, they've, they're, they're very right to protest. What role does green ideology play in all of this? I think that's probably at the core of the protests, that saying that green policy has gone mad, it's gone too far, the nitrate laws are unrealistic, the, um, even the net zero thing is unrealistic. People were saying, you know, we've got, uh, we're changing to wind and, and solar and it's just not going to work. And they're not admitting that it doesn't work. And rather than admitting it doesn't work and changing tact, they're just pushing down that same route, which is why the main sort of demand yesterday was this government has to go. This government is seen as a government which mirrors that kind of ideology. Across Europe, of course, we have seen farmers protest. We've seen them in the Netherlands, we've seen them in Ireland. This is the latest in a series of demonstrations. All over Europe, there is this sense of farmers, but also other people who work in the kind of real economy, standing up to green regulations or just austerity of different kind of forms. Um, why is it you think that farming has become such a focus for this kind of politics or these kind of debates? It's one of the ideological pillars of green politics, isn't it? They chose a green uh, minister to, to be farm minister, who is on top of everything else a vegetarian. <laughs> He's never had any any sympathy with farmers, nor have any respect. So I've spoken to many farmers saying he's got no idea about agriculture whatsoever. This idea that there's elements within this which are AFD or forms of extremists, is there any truth to that accusation? What, what did the farmers you were speaking to make of it? They said to me, just have a look around. Do you see any neo-Nazis? Do you see any right-wing people here? And um, they said to me, it's just a, it's, it's propaganda, it's basically to make people feel more insecure, to put people off joining our demonstration. But I haven't heard anybody saying they support the AFD. In fact, people specifically told me, Hello. we're not AFD, you know, we're not right wing. We just want to, we just want to fight for our rights. People saying we want more freedom, we want, more, we want to have the right to decide more on our own. What to plant, where to plant, where not to plant. And they felt the government was going way over the top in making, giving them directions. Uh, a government which has no idea of farming, they said. If, if Olaf Scholz was here, what would you say to him? <laughs> Pack your things and go home and leave us alone. I don't want you anymore. He's a laughing stock, not only in Germany, but in the whole of Europe too. You get the feeling that farmers just aren't wanted in Germany. They want to get rid of us. I'm the 10th generation of an organic farm. We are in danger of not existing anymore, of extinction. This government's had its day. It's made so many mistakes that it can no longer be trusted. So we need a new government and a newly elected parliament, because parliament's been involved in this mess the whole time. Do you think this is going to be the last we see of these farmers or this, this kind of protest in Germany? No, because they seemed pretty angry yesterday. I don't think they're <laughs> going to give up so quickly. And they've said they're not going to give up. The government is doing their best to try and appease them, but I don't think they'll succeed. I think they've lost too much ground.